Hey guys, Zombie here. Welcome to Evil Zombies Lair, episode 22. Yeah, it's 22 years old. <laughs> nah, just saying. It's 22 episodes in, we're having some good fun. Today we're going to go over a lot of things. We're going to go over some personal stuff first. We're going to go into the multimedia, you know, movies, TV news. And we're going to talk about the anime recommendation of the week. And we're going to get into some tech news that I thought was pretty cool. And then we're going to go into the main topic. Which is basically the problem with having so many Steam sales. <laughs> okay guys, so moving on. Yay for bad playing. <laughs> okay, guys. But yeah, first up, uh, personal updates, what I've been up to recently. Recently, well, you know, I've already been working and getting back into Unreal Engine 4. I've been sharpening my skills in that, watching every tutorial under the sun, practicing it a lot, and I'm doing pretty good on that. I'm feeling pretty confident in my skills on the engine again. Um, the other thing I've been doing recently is I found a little game on the phone that reminds me a lot of the RPG games from when I was a kid growing up. So, you know, like, uh, Daggerfall? Elder Scrolls 2 Daggerfall. I found a game on the phone that's just like that. Just better graphics, a really good cohesive storyline. Um, it's easy to find out information from people. It's not just enormous drop-down menus. Now people have different context. So... It's pretty nice. It's like, because the problem with Daggerfall, um, I don't know if you've played Daggerfall, was it was a big game. And it gave you everything right away. And it just threw you into the world pretty much. And when you talk to people, it's like, okay, where is the location of? And then it gives you huge drop-down list. They did away with huge drop-down lists in this game. It's basic stuff. It's all what actually is happening so if you're doing this quest, you can ask about this quest, and if you've already done it, all they do is say thank you, and then you can keep asking other stuff. So their quest layout and their storyline layout for interacting with characters is actually really well done. Um, in the quest, it was a lot of fun. I'm probably going to do a little video on that game probably next week. I just got my band cam up and running again, so... <laughs> And I have 10 minutes before I have to get ready for work. So this is going to be a very fast one. We're actually going to move on from that. Check out the quest. It's in uh, Google Play Store. I don't know if it's on iTunes. It probably is. It's a pretty cool little game. It's like 7 bucks. I think you guys should check it out. It's a lot of fun. I'm having a great time with it. Because I'm a big fan of old school RPGs. And this is so good. It's so good. It's so well done. All the artwork is beautiful too. Okay, moving on to the next part. Um, if you guys have seen uh, or watching the video version of this and you want to listen to the audio there is a, on apple podcasts i guess and the google play store or if, if you can find podcasts through there the podcast is on there same name evil zombies lair uh, they don't want me to say itunes anymore apparently now it's apple podcasts so i don't know why go for it apple whatever you own the place and sorry i'm messing with the hat again my hair is literally a mess today so i just put a hat on <laughs> I lifted up my hat if you're uh, so you can see my hair if you're watching the video. If you're listening to the audio on youtube.com slash evil zombie, there is a video portion of this. Basically a video companion, so you don't have to only listen. If you want to sit down and watch, then you can. Okay, moving on. Subtopics, multimedia stuff. Sonic the Hedgehog is getting a big budget live action movie from Sony. Sonic the Hedgehog, yes. And I don't know how well this is going to do, but they keep on delaying it, delaying it. Now they've finally given us a release date. They're saying it's going to come out on November 15, 2019. This was supposed to come out like in 2016, and they just keep on pushing it back because they can't figure out how to make it good. I mean, they have no idea how to make a good live-action Sonic movie. Who would have thought? No, this is not some. That's not a character that you do for live action. I mean, do a really good animated movie, and then I'll be set. Do an anime movie. The anime movie was so good. Why can't they just do a cartoon movie with a high budget and a dark tone? That would do so well, especially here, because then it's like, oh, grown-up version, so dark and serious, and it would be a lot of fun. <laughs> but yeah, besides that, there's also another piece of multimedia news. Deadpool is getting a card game. And if you like Cards Against Humanity, it's going to be kind of like that. It's called Deadpool vs. the World. And I think it's going to be fantastic. I was reading about it on comicbook.com. And it looks pretty funny. They even have a stack of cards where it's just a WTF card. And you have to get out 
marker and you have to uh, i don't know it's just it's it has a fun concept you should read into it i think it'll be fun i'm definitely gonna buy that when it comes out because i like cards against humanity i like feeling like a terrible person in a card game yay i'm a terrible person anyway so let's do this hey guys moving on anime recommendation of the week this time, if you liked uh, Hajime no Ippo and you like fighting anime, you want something that has that whole feel good, get y'all pumped up, ready for a workout, raw kind of feel, go watch Kenichi, The Mightiest Disciple. Um, I think on the, I read the comic and then I read the manga and then I watched the show. So I finished the entire series in the manga because it goes from beginning to end, the whole story. And then I wa- I did the whole thing, and then I read this sh- or watched the show after that. Both are good. I would suggest doing the same thing. Um, was it History's Strongest Disciples? What it's called? Uh, Kenichi History's Strongest Disciples, the manga. Kenichi, the Mightiest Disciple, is the anime. So you should check it out. It's really cool. He basically learn. It's basically a loser kid who uh, gets picked on, things like that, and he stumbles his way pretty much by following a hot chick into this um, martial arts dojo where there are these absolute masters of every type of martial art inside this building inside this uh, dojo and he's learning from all of them and they're all known as like the supreme grand masters of all martial arts and they're just torturing him in every way possible so it's just so funny it's a delightful show and there's boobs so there's something for everybody. So have fun with that one, guys. If you want to see what other shows I have watched, go to myanimelist.net slash profile slash evilzombie123 because I like anime and I update it whenever I remember, so I'm trying to keep it updated. Hey, guys, moving on. Tech news. This I thought was really cool. Remember how I talked about how they were planning on doing a 14-terabyte th- uh, solid-state disc and that was so exciting? They beat that. Samsung is now mass producing a 30.72 terabyte solid state disk. Now, I was a little confused on uh, when I was reading the articles on this. I'm not sure if it's as accurate, but it sounded like they have DDR4 RAM, 8 gigs of that inside the solid state disk to help boost its speed. So, correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm misunderstanding that, because that is very possible. But from the wording, that's kind of what it sounded like. But I can tell you that the read-write speed of this is freaking fast. Because a normal SSD is like 500, 550 megabytes per second, right? 2100 megabytes per second read and 1700 megabytes per second write. Holy crap. Can you imagine? You don't even need to buy another hard drive again. Just save up for a whole budget for a computer, buy that hard drive, then get a computer... And then just pop that and you're good to go for, what, a year? (laughs) With the rate the games are just requiring more for the sake of requiring more nowadays, even though they don't actually look better. Yeah. Have you ever noticed how games that are about 10 gigabytes in size actually look the same, if not sometimes better than the games that that are 40 gigabytes in size and there's not really a purpose to that other than videos? I don't care if a video is low resolution. Save me the file size. Right? Is, why Why did they just do that? They're like, oh no, our game requires so much more. It's so advanced. I don't know, it just bugs me. And we're talking about games today. So moving into the main topic. With that seamless transition you didn't see me do at all. I'm doing a mystical hand wave for those people who are listening. I need to remember this. it's not only video. I actually get more people listening now than I do watching. So that's cool. <laughs> but yeah, guys, um, Steam library issues. Now, there's not a glitch, anything like that, but I'm talking about the issue with Steam making it too easy to get dev games for almost free sometimes, and to to make like to get indie games, I mean, for almost free, next to nothing, and then to stockpile them into your library. The issue with that, because I blame Humble Bundle mostly, and Fanatical, and Indie Gala. I love these sites, and I get a crap ton of games for them. There is never a time where I don't think I have a, a game to play for the channel. I always have a game to play for the channel. If not on Steam, if I can't get to my computer, even then I have a, a, a bunch of them on my phone, because Humble Bundle also does mobile sales. So, and is this a good thing or a bad thing? Sure, it's a good thing for the Humble Bundle people and for the game publishers, 
it's fantastic for them. For the publishers, it's great. They love it. They love being able to sell games like this because people will buy their game, people will get the product, and hopefully people will buy their game again in the future. But the problem with uh, the way they're doing it is, well, basically you get so many games that you don't pay attention to the smaller ones. Because you'll have like one or two really big title games in each bundle. And then you forget about all the little indie developer games, which really does hurt their company if you don't think about them at all. I think it should just be where, well, the bigger thing is I go to the Humble Store more often. I'll look through and then I'll look at the Steam reviews, see if the game is good. I'll look at what the discount is and all that. I was like, wow, why is that so cheap, you know? But if it's a good game, then I'm going to go for it and play that one. But the problem with having such a big library is you stockpile these games. I'm pretty sure I have well over 200 games on my Steam library right now. I'm probably getting close to 250. And I think I've played about half of them, honestly. I mean, I've played about half the games in my library. I've tried to get as many of them played as I can, but there's just so many. And it's intimidating because there's so many to play through. And yes, first world issues. I have too many games. <laughs> But no, it's the way that they do it. They make it cheaper to just get a bundle. Pay a dollar, pay five dollars, whatever, and then you get a bundle of 20 games, you know? it's You just start stockpiling them, and then there's no hope for the indie developers to get any kind of recognition that they deserve for making something fantastic. So, I think they need to hopefully change the way this works a little bit. Um, maybe advertise the smaller companies a little more than the bigger ones. Because their products just aren't getting the recognition they deserve, even though they're all getting pushed out in this bundle. Because you know it gets pushed into your backlog. You're like, oh, I'll play that. And then you don't. So, I mean, I'm really trying. But since I switched my schedule to three days a week, it's not going to happen anytime soon. But at least I'm sleeping more, so I'm happy about that. I'm not tired all the time. But I will get to it at some point. That's what everyone tells themselves, and it's kind of an issue. So I just wanted to talk about that with you guys because it kind of bugs me a little bit. I keep, I keep on, if you're watching, I'm turning my head up all the time looking at the clock because I'm, my, yeah, I had to reinstall Bandicam and I had a bunch of issues this morning to get everything running and working. But yeah, oh, today's going to be leg day. This is going to be such a tiring day. I love leg day, but oh, I'm going to be so tired tonight. Because <sighs> it's, uh, it's almost 5 a.m. now. I've been up since 4 trying to get this all to work. But yeah, so... I really don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, I guess. To me, it's a little... It's nice that their devs are getting money. They're not getting as much money. But it's nice that they are getting some recognition, some pay for this. But they're really probably going to be hurting if nobody knows who they are. They'll be like, oh, we're the guys that made this game. It was in the Humble Bundle. Oh, it was? That was just one of the games that threw my library. So, it sucks for indie devs, I think. Because they really deserve a little bit more recognition than that. Um... Other than that, guys, I think that's really all I had to talk about today. I just wanted to get that out and just get that off my chest. I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because it's been bugging me a bit. So tell me what you think, guys. Tell me. This is a discussion. Talk to me in the description below because I always read those. And there was someone that also wanted to wanted me to do a video on, um, well, a more in-depth video on shoulder pain and boxing. Um, I'm just trying to find the time to do that. I'm planning it out I'm doing all the research I want to do a good video for that one that gives you all the details and tells you exactly what you need to do and why you need to do it to save your shoulders save your joints because I have arthritis and I have tendonitis uh, most the tendonitis mostly from years of being an arm wrestler and competitions and it just messed up my shoulder over time and then ten, I arthritis just because it's genetic with my family so I have some pretty good advice to give on how to save your shoulders because I still go and hit the bag several times a week um, for half an hour to an hour, you know? And my shoulders are surviving, so I'll make a video on that another time. And you will see that. It'll be good. So, yeah, we're going to stop this for now, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I hope you enjoyed. I think I said that twice. Okay. But have a good one, guys. Um, make sure you check out the audio portion if you want to. Uh, that way you can download it. I have a Google Play link in the, link in the description below if you want to download it. Uh, any of the older episodes, too. They're all there. So I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.